In this video, we are going to learn about theoretical and experimental spinners. The first thing that we're going to talk about is the difference between theoretical probability and experimental probability. Theoretical probability is the probabilities that you get by doing the math. It's what sort of should happen in the long run. On the other hand, experimental probability is what you get after actually doing an experiment. So if we're talking about spinning spinners, if you want to figure out an experimental probability, you actually have to spin spinners multiple times and see what happens. So in this video, we're focusing on spinners and thinking about the difference between theoretical and experimental probability with respect to spinners. So let's think about a spinner that is divided into four equal sections. One, two, three, and four. And this is a spinner that you could spin such that it would land in one of these sections. Because the sections are equal, we would expect that the probability of landing in each section would be the same. So if we were to spin the spinner multiple times, in the long run, we should see the same number of spins for each of the numbers. It should be divided up equally. So for example, the probability of getting a 2 should be 0 0.25, 25%. Now that's the theoretical probability based on math only without actually spinning any spinners. If we were to actually conduct an experiment where we spun spinners, we might see that the experimental probability is slightly different. On your calculator, there is a simulator that will actually simulate spinning a spinner, among other things. How you get to it is go into the apps section, so click apps, and then look for the item that says prob sim, just like this. On my calculator, it's way down at the bottom, so I'm actually going to scroll up to get to the very bottom, and then look from there. Okay, so there it is, and then click enter. You'll see it loading and press any key, so I'm just going to press enter again. And we're working this time on spinning a spinner, so push in number four. And now we can see our spinner. And what we can do is set a given number of spins we want it to do, and it will graph how many times it landed on one, two, three, or four. So let's just try spinning ten times. So you click the set button and then I'm going to type in 10 where it used to have 1 and click enter. Now all you have to do is press spin and you can see it's actually spinning the spinner multiple times. And this is the ultimate result as shown in this graph. If we wanted to see it in the table form, we can click the button under table right here, which is actually the graph button, and see in table form what did we get in each of the spins. So notice that there are actually a lot more twos than any other number. If we click the right arrow, we can scroll through and see there was one one, four twos, two threes, and three fours. So the experimental probability of getting a 2 was actually 4 out of 10, or 0.4, because 4 out of our 10 trials, we got a 2. What you should expect is in many trials, so if we spun it more and more times, 100 times, 1,000 times, a million times, the experimental probability should become closer and closer to the theoretical probability because that's where theoretical probabilities come from is what really should happen in the long run. So that's how you can use your calculator to figure out experimental probabilities and simulate probabilities having to do with spinners and also just a brief overview of the difference between theoretical and experimental probabilities.